Oil giant Saudi Aramco has seen a 25% drop in profits for the first quarter of this year and warns of challenging conditions for the months ahead. Among its concerns, production cuts. Saudi Arabia's energy ministry announced Monday it would deepen its cuts by a further 1 million barrels per day as global demand weakens. Now, this is a blow for one of the world's biggest companies. The world was a very different place last December when Saudi Aramco, the biggest oil company of them all, went public in a blaze of glitz. The coronavirus pandemic means the bell has well and truly tolled for the oil sector. Even for a company then valued at a mind-boggling $1.7 trillion, the pandemic has quickly burned through balance sheets. The price of crude oil has plunged dramatically since coronavirus lockdowns led to a massive reduction in demand. In the six months since Aramco launched its shares, oil has lost well over half its value on global markets. Saudi Aramco has already felt the impact of that. Its stock price has been in steady decline since the IPO, yet so far it has not fallen anywhere near as sharply as the overall price of oil. That may be because the company still plans on paying out a $25 billion dividend for the next five years. However, in what looks an increasingly barren time for the sector, all bets are off in the oil kingdom. Okay, are any bets on? For more, let's find out from Claudia Kempford, energy expert at the German Institute for Economic Research. Good morning, Claudia. Nice to see you. Uh, when it comes Good to morning. when it comes to Saudi Aramco, there, its problems are they strictly a result of the virus hitting the demand for oil, or do they predate the crisis? Well, I would say it's predating the crisis because um, we already saw um, before the Corona crisis extended that there are severe difficulties, uh, not only in Saudi Arabia, but especially to Saudi Aramco. Um, so the stakeholders are basically domestic. There are geopolitical risks, there's a corruption and a lot of uncertainty. So even now with the corona crisis, the problems are increasing or the, challenging's, the challenges are increasing. So we now are facing a difficult situation. Okay, it's a challenge is not just for oil companies like Aramco, the entire oil-based Saudi Arabian economy is in a position that was absolutely unimaginable last quarter. Can Riyadh get out of this crisis? Well, only if they do a lot of reforms and only if uh, they are changing also their, their business models for the whole country because they are now very dependent on oil and gas exports. Uh, they need an oil price above a level of $70 per barrel. And this is a price we will not see this year, even not next year, if, if the uh, oil demand is still low. And therefore, they need to change. They need to invest more into renewables, into energy saving programs, into reforms uh, like increasing taxes and all this. It's unlikely that this will happen so fast. So there might come severe difficulty or a se severely difficult time. Okay, and that, that raises all sorts of stability issues for that entire region. Let's move on to a very a startling statement by the CEO of oil company BP. He's saying it's possible that we've reached peak oil, that demand might fail to pick up after the coronavirus crisis. How can the oil industry continue in its current form? Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, it's very difficult that they are continuing in this current form. They need to structure, they need to restructure and also invest into alternatives to oil because the oil era is ending now with the corona crisis even faster than expected. Uh, so the oil demand might uh, might be low only because uh, the flights are decreasing. Um, the economic stimulus uh, program in many OECD countries are fostering cleaner technologies like electric mobility and also the heating system which are replaced uh, and and uh, the insulation is, is boosted uh, by this kind of program. So the oil demand might be low. So the companies need to change and also um, diversify also to more renewable energy and also change their supply structure. Okay, so there could be a, a golden lining to this crisis for renewables. Uh, Claudia, thanks very much for coming in on this today. Thank you. 
Well, EU health ministers are meeting today to discuss the virus's impact on the production and distribution of medicines. The pandemic continues to wreak havoc on international supply chains. Many of the components of common medications come from China and then move on to secondary countries. So what happens when productions of the raw materials stops? Let's take a look. It's loud in here, stuffy and smelly. Manufacturing antibiotics is a dirty process, and back in March, production at Penham Laboratories near Delhi was going full blast, churning out 150 tonnes a month. The final product goes to 60 countries, including some in Europe, where it's pressed into pill form. But the precursor substances come from China, and the coronavirus shutdown there threatened production here. It just shows how utterly dependent the world is. 80% of medicinal raw materials come from China. India used to produce them too, but Chinese products are cheaper. China has been, in the last 25, 30 years, seen that the rest of the world is stopped manufacturing. And many of the advanced countries, they have forgotten the art of manufacturing antibiotics. Uh, they thought that's the ugly thing to make dirty their hands. So they passed on basically to China. In Germany, pharmacists like here near Stuttgart were having to apologize to customers about supply problems. Shortages of key painkillers and blood pressure drugs as well as antibiotics were already an issue even before Germany went into lockdown. Once China stopped exporting, things looked to go from bad to worse. But global supply chains for medicines are complex and non-transparent. If you're a manufacturer, of course you're not going to say where you get your substances, at what price and in what volume. It's like in other industries. How you get your raw materials can give you a competitive edge. The coronavirus crisis has only highlighted what experts have long warned about. Pricing pressure, especially for generic medications, has led to massive dependence on China. Many pharmacists in Germany would like to see at least part of the production process brought back home. Where can this end? We need the manufacturers to ensure stable supplies. It cannot go on like this. We really have to bring production back to Germany, to Europe. And with similar calls being made in India, it could mean governments will take new steps to break the Chinese dominance of the pharmaceuticals market. Well, German industrial giant ThyssenKrupp is reporting a 1.3 billion euro loss as it struggles to deal with the fallout from the pandemic. The company, which has already let go of 3,000 employees in its steel division, is facing a growing mountain of debt. And that is eating into the cash generated from a multi-billion euro sale of its elevator business. Let's get more on this with DW's markets reporter, uh, Chelsea Delaney, down in Frankfurt for us. Good morning to you, Chelsea. Um, ThyssenKrupp was in the middle of a deep reform plan when all of this hit, the bad news. Will this derail those reform efforts? This is certainly a blow to these uh, these turnaround plans, which were seen as extremely crucial for ThyssenKrupp after years of uh, seeing their business shrink, after seeing their market value decline. Uh, the, the key part of this was they were going to sell this elevator unit for about 17 billion euros and then use all of that money to reinvest in their business uh, and, and to pay down some of that debt. But now that they're facing a huge drop off in, in demand, particularly for their auto part business, uh, they're saying that this is really really going to eat into the money that they have to reinvest to pay down debt. And this is really spooking shareholders today. The, the stock opened down in Frankfurt about 7%. Also spooking shareholders. Profits at the French train maker Alstom, they're also down. Uh, uh, will the pressure now ease on that comp, uh, company uh, and for the sector now that we're seeing some economies uh, starting to reopen? Well, Alstom is, is sounding quite optimistic today. Uh, they say that they're starting to restart production in their factories, that uh, they expect that to, to really ramp up over the next couple of uh, couple of months. But they are seeing a really significant decline in demand because they, they supply trains. Demand for, for train travel has been quite low, and all of the, the train companies are really struggling. So they do say that this could impact their, their results for, the, for this year. Uh, for the 2021-2020 uh, 
uh, fiscal year, but they, they do expect the, the market to turn around uh, quite soon. They are, for one, really confident in the, the train market because um, this is really seen as the, the, the key uh, transportation. Um, uh, uh, this is really going to be a very important transportation source going forward in this, this era of green mobility. Uh, good, good to hear that there's a note of optimism in Frankfurt today in spite of all the, uh, the bloodletting out there. Chelsea, thanks for that.